My name is Christy Abo. I'm an MD PhD student in the lab of Andrew Wilson at the CREM of Boston University. Um, and I would like to tell you about air liquid interface culture promoting maturation of human iPSC derived alveolar type 2 like cells. So, air liquid interface culture systems exist actually for many epithelia including epithelia of the gastrointestinal system, which is interesting because some of those don't actually exist at air liquid interface in vivo. Um, the female reproductive tract, several others, including um, the skin and the eye. Um, and in the lung, models of the airway epithelium at air liquid interface have served as a very useful in vitro model uh, for years um, to study the effective environmental exposures um, including viral infections on um, airway epithelial cells. In the distal part of the lung, the gas exchange portion, um, the alveolar epithelial uh, type 2 cells can be cultured at air liquid interface um, from rats, as published by Leland Dobbs in the 90s. Um, and, but primary type 2 cells have their challenges for in vitro culture. So as I just mentioned, rat type 2 cells can be cultured at air liquid interface. And uh, we've known that for years. Very recently, actually, a human type 2 cell air liquid interface was uh, published from Robert Mason's lab. And prior to this, we've known that we can culture uh, primary type 2 cells in 3D, as published by, uh, by Bridget Hogan's lab. Um, and these models have proven very useful. Um, but are a bit limited only because they require the uh, digestion access to and dissociation of explant lungs um, to access these cells. And so we would like to come up with a system that can allow for the study of environmental exposures to the alveolar epithelium um, in a way that's a bit more, that's, uh, that's more tractable and self-renewing. And so we can uh, use induced pluripotent stem cells, stem cell derived alveolar epithelial type 2 like cells. So through this directed differentiation protocol developed by the Cotton Lab, we can recapitulate major milestones of development and from patient derived iPSCs, generate these self-renewing alveolar epithelial type 2 like cells, which have been very well characterized, are similar to primary type 2 cells and um, can be cultured in 3D. They can also be dissociated and cultured at air liquid interface. So they are just dissociated, plated on trans wells, and exposed to air. So there's air above, liquid below. Um, and when we do this, these cells, uh, these uh, culture systems increase in trans epithelial electrical resistance. So a measure of epithelial barrier function um, to a level of around four to 500 ohm centimeters squared. Um, and this level is similar to what has been published from rat primary type 2 cell ALIs. Um, it has not been published for primary human ALIs. Um, they also importantly maintain expression of the important lung transcription factor NKX 2.1, uh, important lung epithelial transcription factor at the protein level as shown here by flow cytometry. Um, and this system has a TD tomato reporter for the and the surfactant protein C um, locus, and these uh, maintain expression of surfactant protein C. Uh, TD tomato. So it, um, you might hypothesize that at air liquid interface, type 2 like cells would undergo differentiation to type 1 like cells or would undergo epithelium and zenchymal transition. And we don't see evidence of either of these processes happening in our system. So when we split alveolar spheres uh, to either ALI or uh, continue them in 3D culture, and then uh, uh, profile these by single cell RNA sequencing, we see that um, there is no expression really of type 1 cell markers. So these are, uh, this is a module score, a compositive, uh, the expression of these three uh, transcripts, AGER, CAV1, and CTSE. And similarly, we don't see um, expression of the, of uh, genes involved in the epithelial mesenchymal transition, and this is a hallmark gene set. Um, you can see that I've marked zero here with the red line. There's very little expression. We don't think that there is meaningful uh, either differentiation to type 1 like cells or EMT occurring in this system. What we do see um, is that these IPS derived type 2 like cells seem to mature at air liquid interface compared to 3D. So again, when we passage um, IAT2s cultured in 3D 
to either ALI or 3D and then follow them over time, we see that there's, um, by qPCR, there's upregulation of surfactant protein A1. So in red here is ALI, in blue is the 3D, as well as SPA2 and SLPI. So these three are markers of more mature type 2, like type 2 cells. And importantly, they seem to downregulate SOX9, an important uh, lung epithelial progenitor marker. Um, and then this also varies out at the single cell level. So this is a, a composite module score, including these three genes, as well as a few others of type 2 cell maturation as defined by the Cotton Lab in this recent publication. And we can see that there is an increase in this uh, maturation score at air liquid interface compared to 3D and the single cell was done at day 10 post passage. There are a few important functional characteristics of a type 2 cell including the production and secretion of surfactant that seem to be maintained at air liquid interface. So first we see expression of lamellar bodies by electron microscopy um, at air liquid interface and the lamellar bodies are the um, organelle of the type 2 cell that contains surfactant. And then when um, surfactant is secreted, it forms this uh, beautiful tubular myelin um, with this grid-like pattern on electron microscopy. And we see that at, in our air liquid interface cultures. So as I mentioned, the purpose of this type of um, model system is to allow the study of the type 2 cell response to environmental exposures. So for example, this enables us to ask how type 2 like cells respond to cigarette smoke and e-cig vapor exposure. So they can be passaged to air liquid interface, exposed to um, Juul, the most popular e-cig vapor or cigarette smoke. And we can see, for example, that there is a difference in kinetic in the transcriptional response to, um, to these exposures. So here I'm showing you qPCR for one of the smoke responsive genes, alpha ketoreductase um, 1C3. You can see that it peaks at different time points um, when exposed to e-cig vapor compared to cigarette smoke. Um, and we can also ask how um, IIT2s respond to infection, including SARS-CoV-2 infection. And so for more information on that project, please visit Jesse Huang's poster in the lab of Daryl Cotton. Um, thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions.